Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, and our ongoing study in the Bondage of the Will by Martin Luther, published in 1525. We're going to look at the recall triad for the uh, lesson six, his uh, closing argument. It was a pretty, uh, pretty detailed lesson from Luther, so the recall triad will help us to. Uh, encapsulate the key elements of that closing argument against Erasmus. And also you notice on this recall chart that we will have uh, our reference of the early church history surrounding Luther II as a reminder for us. And so we'll have that on uh, every recall lesson that we do. Let's take a look at the uh, Block one, let's take a look at the, the inability of man's fallen nature. Man's fallen nature is carnal, not simply infirmed, says Luther. And he uses Genesis 6 3 and 1 Corinthians 3 3. We have an inability to reach God on our own. He uses Romans 8 and Genesis 8. In that instance, man has a fallen free will that needs God's intervention. Period. We cannot approach God on our on our own. And he goes to Acts 15:8 and Isaiah 40. He always bases everything in Scripture because doctrine has to be based on the infallibility of Scripture and on sound good conscience. That's Luther's definition. Doctrine must be informed by infallible Scripture and good sound conscience. Now block two, the consequence of man's fallen nature. Human will is withered and faded, says Isaiah 40 and John 3. We are dead in sin, not just infirmed. We are dead in sin. That's from Romans 8. And then the key. Luther loves this. Uh, John chapter 3. We must be born again. We must be born from above out of our death. We must be born from above. And he uses John 3, of course, but also Jeremiah 10.23. He also references Jeremiah. And that leads us to the uh, all-important block 3, where Luther closes out his uh, final argument saying that sign value must be preserved in this doctrine, and that means to affirm that only God gives increase. Only God gives spiritual increase. Salvation is by grace, only grace. So he tells us that the evangelical fruits are lost unless we are in Christ, he takes that from the Gospel of John, John 15, 5. By not being in Christ, we are cast forth and withered. Again, that's John 15, but John 15, 6. And then the verse, only God can give spiritual increase from 1 Corinthians 3, 7. All of this conclusive argument, because remember, the final lesson is going to be testimony from Paul and John. This was his uh, closing argument. And basically, we have a fallen nature. We are dead in sin. We must be born again. That's his closing argument. We have a carnal, fallen nature. We are not simply ill or infirmed. We are dead in sin. We don't need a little help. We don't need to cooperate with God for salvation. We need to be resurrected for salvation. We need the quickening of the spirit for salvation. So we're not infirmed. We are dead in sin. We have a fallen nature. We are dead in sin. We need to be born again because God alone gives spiritual increase. And he goes, obviously, from Romans to the Gospel of John, back to Genesis, from Romans to the Gospel of John, and then back to Genesis. Luther is 
deeply rooted in the apostolic witness of the Apostle Paul and the apostolic witness of John the Beloved. That becomes his strength, and he is scripture-based in his doctrine. But let's review that uh, early church history. It's important to see where this uh, Reformation was situated. In 325 A.D., the Council of Nicaea met. They addressed the heresy of Arianism. Uh, remember, Arius said Christ is not co-eternal with God the Father, and Christ is not co-substantial with God the Father. Athanasius opposed this, and the council sided with Athanasius. Christ is co-eternal with the Father. Christ is co-substantial with the Father. They affirmed Trinitarian doctrine against Arius and his heresy. Then in 412 AD, at the Council of Carthage, Pelagius denied man's fallen nature. The heresy of Pelagianism rose up. It was countered by Augustine. Augustine said, man has a fallen nature. Augustine posited the doctrine of original sin. And so the council sided with uh, Augustine and the doctrine of the fallen nature of mankind was affirmed. However, in 412 AD also, Pope Zosimus issued a papal bull condemning the Council of Carthage, and he sided with Pelagianism. Because if you deny an entirely fallen nature, then you can tell your parishioners that they need to cooperate with the priest to attain salvation. You can create a works righteousness type of worship, which the Catholic Church did. So Pope Zosimus condemned the Council of Carthage. Then we move all the way into the Reformation time in 1525. Actually, it was 1524 when Erasmus wrote his diatribe on the free will. But then in 1525, Luther countered with his bondage of the will. And that has been defined as synergistic doctrine versus monergistic doctrine. Synergistic doctrine says we cooperate with God for our salvation. Erasmus says we do have a free will, a free human will. It is not fallen. We might have a fallen nature, but we're, we're injured. We're not completely dead. Luther said we are completely dead in sin, in our fallen nature. And therefore, it's uh, God alone who secures salvation. Mono, alone, God alone. Sin, synergistic, means working together. Monergistic means a work of God alone. So it's synergistic doctrine versus monergistic doctrine. And uh, just 20 years after the Reformation, 20 years after this book by Luther, the Council of Trent again denied man's fallen nature. That was by Pope Paul III. However, the reformers were not done because in 1618, at the Council of Dort, Arius rose up to posit a semi-Pelagian heresy again. And in 1618, that was the birth of five-point Reformation theology or five-point Calvinism, as it is known today. It's really five-point Reformation theology, but it's called five-point Calvinism. But uh, this gives us a quick recall triad. That was a pretty lengthy lesson we had. And so that's going to wrap up uh, the recall triad for the closing argument of Luther's uh, bondage of the will.